Hello students, the next part of our discussion on private international law concerns torts. An easier explanation concerning torts within the private international law could be that tortious act could be localized to the place of the occurrence. The lex loci delicti applies irrespective of the existence of the foreign element. Considerations of foreign element relating to the parties, nationality, domicile, habitual residence abroad are of no significant relevance. Moreover, unlike contracts where a choice of law clause is agreed upon, tort injuries are most unexpected and parties are hardly likely to give advance thought to any choice of law. Suppose that a drug is manufactured in Austria and marketed in a country Belgium where Sandra consumes it and suffers personal injuries as a result. Ebes, a French tourist, is injured in a car accident driven by Jack, English domiciliary in Belgium. Defamatory letters are written by N against M in Germany and published in London. An English employee suffers injuries as a result of an industrial accident in Libya. If an action is brought in England on any of these torts, which law will an English court apply? Applying the law of the forum may lead to injustice and inconvenience. A defendant may be held liable for an act which may constitute a tort in England but not in the place where it was committed. Besides, it would give the plaintiff an incentive to forum shop for a place where the law is more favorable to him or her than that of the place where the tort was committed. On the other hand, to apply the law of the place of tort may not be appropriate, especially where the parties have little or no connection with that place. 1. A variety of factors such as residence, domicile or nationality or the place of the party's relationship could be involved in the case and it could further complicate the concern. 2. In transboundary torts, difficulties in locating the place where the tort has been committed. 3. If a foreign tort law has to be applied, it could possibly lead to liability being imposed for torts unknown to English law of torts. The three theoretical models that have been considered in respect of the choice of law in tort are 1. Lex loci delicti The law of the place where the tort was committed, a place that might be entirely fortuitous, having no close connection with law of the injured parties. Example, an aircraft crash in Germany involving an aircraft made in America which is operated by an American company and has British passengers as victims. 2. Lex Fori The law of the place where the tort is litigated, a model that might encourage forum shopping, that is, seeking to litigate in the country having jurisdiction and the most favorable laws as far as the plaintiff is concerned. And 3. Proper law of the tort, that is, litigating in the country having the closest and most real connection with the tort. For torts committed in England, English law alone applied. Where the tort was committed abroad, a double actionability test evolved from Phillips versus Iyer decision. This requirement for double actionability meant that to be actionable, the act tort had to be unlawful both in the country where the act was committed and under English law, which unduly favored defendants. The Phillips v. Iyer decision hands out two basic principles. The wrong must be such that it would have been actionable if committed in England. 
and 2 the act must not have been justifiable by the law of the place where it was done. Hence, in an action on a foreign tort, the applicable law would be determined according to the above formula. That is, the alleged wrong must be actionable in England and it must not be justifiable by the law of the place where it was committed. Strand 1 actionable as a tort according to English law. In the Haley's case, an action for the employer's vicarious liability was dismissed on the ground that such a tort was then unknown to English law. In an action of foreign ship owners against a British steamer to recover compensation for a collision caused by negligent navigation of the British steamer in the Belgian waters, the defendants pleaded that the steamer was under the charge of a compulsory pilot whom they were compelled to employ under the Belgian law and hence they were not liable for the negligence of the compulsory pilot under the English law. The defendants were however liable under the Belgian law for the negligence of the compulsory pilot. The Privy Council was of the view that there could be no remedy for an act which did not constitute a wrong according to the English law, even if it were under the Lex Loci Delicti Commissi. Thus, the rule came to be known as the double test. The wrong complained of must be wrong under the Lex Loci Delicti Commissi and also under the English law. The Lex Fori must look at the word actionable as meaning a liability roughly similar to that for which the plaintiff is seeking remedy. Strand 2 Not justifiable according to the Lex Loci Delicti. A plaintiff brought an action for assault and false imprisonment by the defendant, the governor of Jamaica, during a rebellion on the island. The defendant argued that the grievances complained of were necessary measures implemented to suppress the rebellion and were therefore reasonable and in good faith for the purpose of putting an end to it. He further pleaded the act of indemnity as an answer to the action. The court of exchequer sustained his plea and held that civil liability arising out of a wrong derives its birth from the law of the place and its character is determined by that law. Therefore, an act committed abroad if valid and unquestionable according to the law of the place where it was committed cannot be raised for civil liability under a law elsewhere. In Boys versus Chaplin decision, the second limb of the rule in Phillips versus Eyre was modified and the phrase non-justifiable was replaced by actionable. Here, the plaintiff and defendant were both resident in England but temporarily stationed in Malta in the British Armed Forces. While both were off duty, the plaintiff was seriously injured in a road accident as a result of the defendant's negligent driving. Under the law of Malta, the plaintiff could only recover special damages for his expenses and proved loss of earnings. Under English law, however, he could also recover general damages for pain and suffering. The House of Lords unanimously held that the plaintiff should recover damages assessed according to English law. This decision, however, was founded upon divergent reasoning. Broad confirmation with the rule of double actionability in Phillips' decision was enough. The English court could devise its own remedies. 
compensation for pain and suffering could not be a separate head of damages but was merely a part of the quantification of compensation. Apply the law of the natural forum to discourage forum shopping. A foreign tort should be actionable as tort according to English law, subject to the condition that civil liability in respect of the relevant claim exists as between the actual parties under the law of the foreign country where the act was done. Why lex loci delicti should determine the rights and liabilities of the parties wherein respect of that particular issue some other state had a more significant relationship with the occurrence and the parties the local law of the state ought to be applied accordingly held English law applicable. The result was that an action on a foreign tort will be maintainable if the act is taught under English law and it is also actionable in the foreign country where it was committed. The other important principle that was developed in this decision was that the choice of law would be the lex loci delicti commissi. But where the tortious act was committed in more than one place that law may be applied with which the parties demonstrated the most intimate connection. The decision in Boyce versus Chaplin was applied by the Chancery Division in Coupland versus Arabian Gulf Oil Company case. Here, the plaintiff, while working as a technician in Libya for the defendant oil company, had an accident and suffered an amputated leg. He received payments for his injuries under Libyan social security and labor laws and under an insurance policy taken out by the employer. In an action for negligence against the defendants, the court of appeal held that the plaintiff was entitled to his claim. It was further held that the Libyan law was the proper law of the contract of employment but since the plaintiff's claim was based on a tort committed abroad, English law would apply in so far as the claim in tort was not excluded or restricted under the terms of the contract. In the recent case of Metal and Rostov AG versus Donaldson, Lufkin and Jundret Incorporated, the Swiss company brought an action in the English court against two US companies for inducing a breach of contract. The acts which led to the alleged inducement occurred in a series of meetings in the USA as a result of which the plaintiff's brokers committed breaches of contract in England. The court of appeal held that the tort was committed in England where the breaches of contract and the resulting damage occurred even though the acts of inducement took place in the USA. This rule was criticized as being parochial because an action in the English courts in respect of a tort committed abroad could fail if the defendant wasn't liable under the English law as required under the first limb of the Phillips versus Iyer decision as modified, even if it involved parties, none of whom had any connection with England other than the fact that the case was litigated there. The common law rules have been repealed to a large extent by virtue of part 3 of the Private International Law Miscellaneous Provisions Act 1995. Part 3 applies to acts which are regarded as torts in English domestic law and quite likely to those 
wrongs which are not torts under the domestic law but may be classified as such for the purpose of private international law. Example, invasion of privacy or infringement of an intellectual property right. Further, if an act amounts to a tort, a plaintiff may sue in respect of such an action even if he is in a contractual relationship with the defendant. The act removed the requirement of double actionability for a foreign tort to be decided in England. Where the tort occurs in one country, the law of that country, the lex loci delicti is the applicable law. However, where the events constituting the tort occur in two or more countries, either a rigid rule or a more flexible rule will apply depending on the nature of the tort. A rigid rule applies in relation to personal injury that the applicable law is the law of the country where the individual was when he sustained the injury and for damage to property, the law of the country where the property was when it was damaged. The applicable law in any other case is more flexible and therefore much more likely to be problematical. It requires first the most significant element or elements of the tort to be ascertained. It involves the application of the law of the country in which the most significant element or those elements of the events constituting the tort occurred, subject of course to there being no conflict with principles of public policy or the giving effect to such penal revenue or other public law as would not otherwise be enforceable under the law of the forum. The locus of the tort is ascertained by applying the common law test of the place of substantial cause of action. Since an action in tort is an action in personam, the English court acquires jurisdiction by the mere presence of the defendant within its jurisdiction. Cause of action and locus delicti. The locus delicti of tort is presented in the context of the jurisdictional situation. This rule allows leave to serve the process out of jurisdiction if the action begun by the plaintiff is for a tort committed within the jurisdiction of the forum's court. In Distillers Company Biochemicals Limited versus Thompson, a company failed to communicate a drug related warning in New South Wales where the plaintiff's mother purchased the drug. The omission took place in New South Wales where the drug was purchased. The court held that it would only be necessary to establish that the act or omission on the part of the defendant that had given rise to a cause of action to the plaintiff should have been performed within the jurisdiction. These cases lay down that if the act or omission constituting the wrongful act is committed within the jurisdiction, then that place is the locus delicti, even if the resultant damage was located elsewhere. Defenses In an action in England on a foreign tort, the following defenses are available. One, any defense whether the substantive or procedural under the lex fori. 2. Any defense under the lex loci delicti with the exception of defenses under the procedural law. In some instances, a contract may contain a clause limiting or excluding liability for personal injury or damage to property. If an injured party was to bring an action in tort against the defendant 
could the clause contained in the contract operate so as to deny the plaintiff his or her claim for compensation in tort? In other words, would the defendant be able to raise such a clause in the contract as a defense to prevent the plaintiff from recovering in tort? In Sayers versus International Drilling, the plaintiff, an Englishman, entered into a contract of employment with the defendants, a Dutch company, to work on their oil rig in Nigerian waters. The contract contained a clause stating that the plaintiff should accept the benefits provided by the company's disability compensation program as his exclusive remedy in the event of accidental injury or disability in lieu of any claims, rights or actions under English law or the law of any other nation. The clause was valid by Dutch law but was invalid by English law. Soon after arriving in Nigeria, he was injured in a serious accident allegedly caused by the negligence of his fellow employees. He brought an action in tort against his employer in England. The defendant raised the exclusion clause as a defense to the action. The Court of Appeal unanimously held that the plaintiff's claim failed on two grounds. The proper law of the contract was Dutch law and accordingly any claim in tort was defeated by the exemption clause. The Court of Appeal treated the validity of such a clause as a purely contractual issue. However, the court fail to consider the relevance of Nigerian law as the lex loci delicti. In Red Sea Insurance Company Limited versus Bugwe SA, the Privy Council hearing the appeal held that as a matter of English law, when a wrong is committed overseas, in exceptional circumstances, it is possible to sue on a tortious cause of action founded on the law of the place of the wrong that does not exist under the law of the forum. In foreign torts, double actionability in lex fori and lex loci delicti is required. However, exceptionally, a plaintiff could rely on the lex loci delicti exclusively. Courts, however, have to remember that they need to apply a foreign law while deciding in favor of the exception. Maritime torts refer to those torts that are committed on high seas. Such acts fall under two categories. One, acts confined to a ship. Examples of such acts include assault by a crew member on his fellow crew members or on a passenger. Tortious acts of a passenger on his fellow passengers or crew members. These situations are very similar to domestic law tort situations and thus there is possibly no question of private international law involved. The only difficulty that arises is in respect of the meaning of the law of the flag in the case of a composite country. Such difficulty is answered by applying the law of the port of registry. Two. Acts, those are external to a ship. These refer to those torts affecting the person or property not on board of a ship. Such acts broadly may be of the following two types. Negligent navigation resulting in a collision with another ship and negligent navigation resulting in some damage to the property of another such as when submarine cables are fouled or when crew of a fishing boat dispute as to the catch of another boat. 
In such cases, the general maritime law as applied by the Admiralty Division of the High Court applies irrespective of the law of the flag. The requirements is that the act ought to be tortious under the English law and by the general maritime law. Aerial torts. Aerial torts that is torts committed on board the aircraft are governed by rules similar to the maritime torts. The place of a tort committed in and internal to an aircraft on the ground or in and internal to an aircraft in flight over land or over the territorial sea of a state is the place in or over which the aircraft was located at the relevant time and not the place of the registration of the aircraft as such. Thus, the place of a tort committed in an internal to a United States registered aircraft in flight at an altitude of 31,000 feet above Scotland is Scotland and not the United States. On the other hand, where a tort is committed in an internal to an aircraft in flight over the high seas or any other place outside the jurisdiction of any state that is example Antarctica, the place of the tort may be deemed to be the place of registration of the aircraft. If a tort claim arises out of a collision between two aircraft over the high seas or any other place outside the jurisdiction of any state, the Lex Fori is the applicable law. The Warsaw Convention limits the role of private international law in the context of aerial torts for the unification of certain rules for international carriage by air 1929 that regulates the liability of air carriers for the death or bodily injury of passengers. In two decisions of the Supreme Court of New South Wales, an issue in the context of the choice of law was the place of commission of an aerial tort. In Lazarus versus Doshe Lufthansa, the plaintiff, Mr. Philip Lazarus, was a passenger on a flight from Germany to Australia operated by the defendant. In proceedings in New South Wales, the plaintiff alleged that while the aircraft was on ground at New Delhi Airport, India, he was defamed and assaulted by a member of the defendant's crew. The court accepted without comment the party's argument that the place of commission of the alleged tort was India, even though the alleged tort was internal to the German registered aircraft. In Georgopolis versus American Airlines, an unreported decision of 1993, an incident occurred on a United States registered aircraft shortly after taking off from Sydney on a flight to Hawaii, which allegedly caused the plaintiff, a passenger, to suffer post-traumatic shock fear of imminent death when a door of the aircraft opened in flight. It was held that the locus delicti was Australia because at the time of the incident, the aircraft was in flight over Australian territorial sea. To conclude, we have now understood the connecting factors and theoretical constructs that explain the liability for foreign torts. We have seen that there are three theoretical explanations for the identification of the applicable law, lex delicti, lex fori and the proper law of the tort. We have also discussed the defenses in an action for tortious wrong as in defenses available and recognized within lex delicti and lex fori. We have also attempted to understand maritime torts and aerial torts and the conventions that explain the liability for such torts.